All right. All right, then. We are recording. Hello, Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Bridge Builders of Diversity. We're doing a slightly different format today because Corona. <laughs> yeah, we had some logistical issues, so we're going to be recording over Zoom. Yeah. But today's topic is really, really important and very near and dear to my heart. My, my, uh, my friend Sherry here is going to talk, interview me, and share with you some statistics about multiple sclerosis. Yep, it's a disease that affects the central nervous system. The immune system attacks the myelin, uh, the protective layer around the nerve fibers and causes inflammation and lesions. This makes it difficult for the brain to send signals to the rest of the body. And about um, close to a million people uh, with adults in the United States live with MS. And there's four different types, four different types of MS. There's the clinically isolated syndrome. Um, the CIS is a first episode of symptoms caused by inflammation of damage to the nerves. This lasts at least 24 hours and may develop into MS. And then the second form is relapsing remitting MS or otherwise known as RRMS. Right. Um, sometimes called relapsing MS, new or more symptoms can appear. This is known as an attack or a relapse and is followed by a period of recovery or remission. A remission is when symptoms partially disappear or go away completely. About 85% of people are initially diagnosed with this type of MS. Okay, the third one is secondary progressive MS or SPMS. And this transition to SPMS is a condition in which the disease tends to progress more steadily. There are two stages of SPMS, active and non-active. This means that people can develop SPMS with or without relapses. Some people with RRMS may transition to SPMS at some point in the course of their disease. Hopefully you followed that all um, around. It's confusing, but... Yeah. But really what it speaks to is the level and the frequency of, of your, your, the lesions that form in your brain. Right. And the fourth one is primary progressive MS, which mm. is PPMS. Uh, and that's a disability tends to worsen over time without an early relapse or remission. Although there may be an occasional relapse later on, about 15% of people with MS are diagnosed with this type of MS. And oh, that's the mean and nasty one. Yes. And uh, Roberta has personal experience with MS. Her husband has um, been diagnosed with it. And how did you find out your husband was diagnosed with MS? How did that all come about? Well, like, like most people with MS, it, there was a, he just had a strange symptom. Um, his MS tends to attack his vision. And one day he came to me and he was like, closing one, he kept closing one eye and looking at me. He was like, what are you doing? And he was like, it's so strange. I can only see half of you when I look at you with, with my left eye. And I said, that's really strange. Does it go away when you rub your eyes or we change the light? So we did all these things with the light and he was like, nope, it's not going away. When I look at you with my left eye, I only see half of you and half of everything else. So, um, it was a very odd time in our lives. I was just finishing my student teaching, so I was not employed. He had just started a new job uh, three months before, so we just got medical insurance, and I had made my first eye doctor appointment in years, so what I did is I sent him to the eye doctor in my stead, and um, she sent him straight to an ophthalmologist who discovered an inflammation of his optic nerve. And he said, look, I'm not gonna tell you the scary list of things that could be wrong, but one of them is MS. And of course we freaked out. And um, <laughs> that's when the diagnosis process began and it is a rule out diagnosis. So there is a laundry list of things that have to be ruled out first. Um, the first diagnostic was a CAT scan of his brain and then a PET scan of his brain. Um, he eventually had a, a barrage of um, blood tests and a spinal tap. 
Um, this was all to rule out other things that would cause an inflammation of his optic nerve. He was um, diagnosed with um, MS, relapsing remitting MS, um, because when treated with steroids, the inflammation in his optic nerve um, uh, went down, sorry, um, it reduced. He got most of the vision back in his left eye and it has not, well, he, it has relapsed in the year since. His di diagnosis, it was in 2003. And um, about 10 years later, a long, long time later, he had um, a nystagma where his eyes weren't tracking. He looked kind of like, it, his eyes were going in two different directions. So what that caused was uh, double vision. And that was due to a, an MS lesion. Uh, making his eyes go in two different directions. He subsequently has some vision issues from it. Like he has a great difficulty seeing at night. Um, when he gets tired, his eyes won't track together and he'll get double vision. Um, but for the most part, he's had been very, very fortunate to, to be able to be treated with steroids and have his miraculous brain, uh, the human brain is a miraculous thing. Um, what it does is it reroutes the pathway around the, um, the inflammation of the myelin sheath. So the, while the steroids will reduce the inflammation, it never goes away. It leaves a, a scar tissue around the myelin sheath. So when you look at a CAT scan of his brain, you can see the little white areas where uh, the myelin sheath has been um, inflamed. Not all MS lesions cause um, symptoms. So, and some of them cause really kooky symptoms because remember it's neurological. Um, one of the kookier ones is one time we were on vacation and it was in the fall. <laughs> so there was no sun bathing going on, but we were getting ready for bed that night and he was insistent that he needed something for a sunburn. He kept saying, I have a sunburn. So finally, I was like, let's, let's think this through logically. You have had your shirt on all day. You do not have a sunburn. <laughs> and, um, when we determined that, he called his doctor and the doctor said, yeah, that is more than likely an MS lesion and it will go away. The funny thing is it does tend to come back at, at the strangest times, usually in the dead of winter. <laughs> He'll be like, woo, I got that sunburn again. And, you know, mm -hmm. It, but what is happening is his, his brain is creating an, a pathway around that again. So that's the relapsing part. The remitting part is he'll go long, long time, years without any symptoms or signs. Now, in the early years, um, were there any other symptoms or signs besides his vision that... Um... It, it's really hard to say. Again, this is, this is kind of an, an enigmatic disease where especially relapsing remitting because a, a symptom will come and then go just as, as strangely as it began, it will just strangely disappear. Right. Um, most of the time, not without treatment, but sometimes like the, like the weird sunburn um, symptom that will, that will go away by itself um, and not require treatment. Um, one of the things that people with MS are, are is very susceptible to fevers and very sensitive to heat. And back in the old days of studying MS, what they would do is they would put um, patients in hot water and bring on a lesion. Like they would like put them in a hot tub, which for, you know, typical people being in a hot tub is relaxing, but for someone with, with MS, it can bring on a lesion or an episode and aggravate their condition. So um, he has to be very, very careful not to overheat or to run a fever for very long. Um, that's why COVID is such a scary thing for him is that it typically comes with a high fever and, and he cannot like be somebody that can ride out a fever. He has to mitigate his fevers right away. Right. Um, so what other treatments has he done or other supports have you gotten? Um, 
there's a lot, a lot, a lot of support out there. The MS Society of America is, is wonderful. Uh, lots and lots of information, networking and um, connections to people. One of the first things that we did as a family was um, fundraise for the MS Society. They have a walk every year. Um, so we went out and it, it was empowering to be part of a group raising funds and um, it's, it's spreading education and um, awareness of the, of the disease um, and, and meeting people with it. Um, the, the, the second thing that we did was um, we were connected, his, his neurologist um, prescribed for him a immunosuppressant therapy. And at the time of his diagnosis, the only thing they had was injectables, which is a little bit problematic for my husband because he is needle phobic. So his weekly, at first they were monthly injections. Um, so one day every month was taken up with at first the fear of the injection and then the side effects from it. Mm -hmm. um, after that, he was prescribed a weekly um, that it was less, um, that had less side effects, but it meant that he had to have a weekly injection versus a monthly injection. So, um, that was, that was tricky and, and very, very problematic as time went on, a um, a tablet and now there's more than one tablet on the market. A tablet was approved by the FDA. That's an immunosuppressant. And he has had a lot of really good luck with that and has been on it for quite a while. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, he, um, he also just got the news that as you age, you are far less likely to have an MS relapse. So oh, wow. by the time he's 60, he will no longer need the immunosuppressant. Oh, and wow. yeah, I know, isn't that? So uh, yay for getting older. Um, it does tend to, you, you, um, the people diagnosed are typically younger. It mm -hmm. does tend to um, affect people who are in their 20s and 30s more than people who are in their 40s, 50s. And instances of people having relapses in their 60s are very uncommon. So yay for aging. Awesome. So what's his future uh, prognosis? Oh. Very good. Very, very good. As long as he stays on his immunosuppressant, um, there are things that he can do to um, to help himself, to keep himself healthier. And they're the things that we should all do. Stay active, eat right, um, stay away from alcohol and tobacco. Um, yeah, practicing has, good health is good for anybody. Exactly, exactly. So those things. And and one of the main things that we've learned over time, incidentally, and through advice of others, is just to keep maintain a positive outlook. It can be very daunting to live with this disease because it, you're constantly waiting for the next shoe to drop. Like, you know, when's the next? Right. When's the next lesion going to form? When's the next episode going to come around? And, and it, the those early months and years of his diagnosis were very, very stressful because. It, we watched, <laughs> we had maybe too much information. We'd watched um, people around us uh, that we were in, in communication with through the doctor's office um, have very, very severe relapses that were debilitating. Mm -hmm. um, but that fortunately, my husband's been able to you know, keep working and keep up a positive attitude and those personal connections. Um, and the healthy lifestyle and it, his prognosis is actually really good. That's great. That's awesome. We're one of the lucky ones. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I am Sherry. I'm a mother of a son with Down syndrome and this is Roberta. I am a special education teacher and a wife of someone living with multiple sclerosis. Yep. So if you like our content, don't forget oh, to- and together we're Bridge Builders like, of Diversity. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget that. <laughs> but please like our content. If there do you, you have any questions about multiple sclerosis or any other topic that you would like for us to share with yeah, you, please comment. We will respond. Um, you know, and don't forget to hit those buttons. I don't yes, know if they're smash the, the notification so you can um, get all our future videos. Sure. We release a video once a week. 
hopefully soon we'll be getting to more than once a week. <laughs> right, hopefully soon. Hopefully soon we'll be able to be in the same room together. Yes, <laughs> hopefully. Nice. All right, so don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, guys.